Hey everybody. Hi. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> My name's Ed. I am a UX freelancer and I'm very excited to be here today with y'all to talk about wandering the frontiers of virtual reality UX. So uh, just a really, really quick blurb about me. I've been doing uh, freelancing for the past two years, but before that I was a game developer for about 15, 16 years. I've worked for Electronic Arts, Pandemic Studios, Spark Limited on a number of franchises, Metal of Honor, Lord of the Rings, Sonic the Hedgehog, um, and uh, uh, in, during that time, I spent about like, over a decade doing UX design for games, and just in recent years, I've transitioned into doing freelancing and virtual reality. So, uh, just a quick outline for the talk today. Um, so first off, we're going to start with a market overview of all the different VR platforms and input and what's going on with VR in 2016 and what you need to be aware of. Uh, we're going to go over VR prototyping tools that you can use to start prototype UX designs in VR. Um, some best practices and tips for the medium of VR and things that you need to be aware of to provide and design good user experiences. Uh, considerations for VR user research things you need to keep in mind when you're talking to your users. Um, and why freelance? Why is freelancing an option that's particularly well suited to what's going on with VR right now? Um, and then we'll talk about the future. It is what's on the horizon, you know, VR technology, very fast moving stuff, and there's new, very exciting developments going on that um, would be good to be aware of. And then we'll wrap things up with a brief QA. So, just a quick shout out to SoCal UX Camp. I have all our awesome sponsors and partnerships um, here that they uh, they get a chance uh, out in the courtyard, go out and say hi, and uh, you know, thanks to them for putting on this great talk and conference for us today. Okay, so show of hands, who has tried VR? Okay, good. That's actually a good number of people. That's very good. So, okay, so who owns a VR device? Does car count? Yes, car count absolutely counts, yes. Okay. So who is working on VR right now? One, two, three people. Okay. All right. But who wants to work on VR? All right. All right. I would like to think that you all want to work on VR here. So, okay. Great. Okay. All right. So how is VR UX different from your vanilla, everyday variety of user experience? So. Obviously, it's new technology, it's new tools, new conventions. It is a new medium in and of itself. Um, there's a lot of things that are applicable, but for all intents and purposes, um, there's, there's a lot of new conventions to learn. Uh, because of these emerging conventions, and also because the market itself is very fragmented, prototyping becomes very, very crucial for doing VR. You have to try your ideas out and get them into the headset and evaluate them. Um, so many fundamental principles and practices of UX still do apply. You know, personas, user maps, journey maps, treasure maps, you know, whatever types of maps or that type of stuff does still apply. But because VR is an artificial reality, a lot of natural input methods and real-world design thinking starts to come into play a lot more than if you were designing for mobile or for web. So let's do an overview of the VR market. So there are basically two parts. You're, if you're talking about VR, you're either talking about the mobile experience or you're talking about a tethered experience, which is console or PC. So under the mobile category, you're basically talking about Google Cardboard, um, Samsung Gear VR. Um, this is the uh, ViewMaster VR, which I don't know how many people remember having ViewMaster when they were a little kid. Yeah, so it's back, you know. Uh, ViewMaster VR is actually just a variant of uh, Google Cardboard. Um, there's also uh, Daydream, which is Google's successor to uh, Cardboard, and um, they're going to be incorporating motion controls with that. Uh, and then there's the tethered console experience, which is you have your PlayStation VR, you have your Oculus Rift, and you have an HTC Vive, uh, which is a collaboration between uh, Steam, which is a PC, you know, how many people know Steam? I've heard of Steam, no, okay, very awesome. So, um, so basically, this all these hardware options present a spectrum. And on the low end, on the mobile side, you have low cost, lower visual power, and simple input fidelity. As you go to the left and get more and more towards the tethered console experience, console and PC experiences, 
it's, it becomes a lot more complex in terms of the power, but also the fidelity of the input and the types of uh, natural inputs that you can do. So with so many choices, how do you know what VR users are actually interested in? So it would not be a UX talk without cheesy Star Trek humor. Sorry, I'm a Star Trek fan, but let's talk about some data. So for 2016, this is what we know about the VR market. So it, you could look at this chart here. This is from Strategy Analytics. And here on the bottom here, you can consider this to be hardware. And on the right value share, you can consider it to be software. So what they're predicting, projecting, is that mobile platforms will make up the bulk of the hardware sales. Um, you know, console base is pretty much a PlayStation VR PC, which is Oculus and HTC Vive. Pretty small market. But when you look at the software side of things, um, the console based stuff is predicted to drive a lot more software sales and have a much higher attach rate and to a lesser extent PC. And I think that kind of reflects some of the general demographics about mobile users versus console or PC users. With consoles and PC, there's a much higher kind of entry point in terms of hardware and investment, um, but they're much more kind of dedicated, hardcore type of gamer demographic. Whereas mobile tends a little bit more towards casual, free to play style of, uh, of gaming. And I can tell you from first hand experience, one of my clients that I'm working with right now, we're doing uh, usability studies with uh, 18, 14 year old kids. Um, the highest awareness they're most interested in Samsung Gear VR, PlayStation VR, and Google Cardboard. So that's kind of, and I've seen other studies that corroborate this. So that's kind of what's emerging as, you know, if you're thinking about VR, especially consumer facing VR, um, this might be where you want to 